Superman issue number nine. That's right, folks. The last Superman issue of the year, bringing us into 2024 with a feature right of the Old West, and that's pretty cool. You know, this book has been really interesting. I think it's like one of the best interpretations the character has had in a long time, where it feels just... Well, I don't know if clean entry is the right word. I don't think it's like a perfectly clear entry into the Superman mythos. It feels more like if you've been wanting to see Clark and Lex have a story that matters to both of them, that's what this is. And, and I wanted that, so I can't be mad at the book for doing that. It's pretty cool. This is a fun issue. It sets up the next mini arc pretty well. We're headed into some interesting directions, we learn a couple of things about some characters, and we have overall fun. At least I think we do. Maybe some people think we don't. I think we do. I think we're having fun. So this book opens up, and Lois Lane is reading fan letters, or just letters to Superman. We see that he's still in, like, a healing coma or whatever, the lights are on him, and she's trying not to get upset by the events, but it's like, this sucks. And she keeps remembering the past times when they first met, when they got married, when they had their son, like all the times they've been together. She's like, all right, keep it together, Lois. We're okay. Here, this letter's from Sean. On to the next moment. We see that Perry White was about to run for mayor of Metropolis, but he's like, at this moment, while Superman heals and Metropolis heals, I don't want to be the center of attention. I want to help the citizens of Metropolis. So I'm, I'm officially putting my campaign on hold until the city gets better. We then cut to Stryker's Island, where Lex is talking to his mother, because now all the Luthers are in the book, too. And she's like, my goodness, boy, look at you. Absolutely insane what you've become. And he's like, just just let me know what my daughter's doing, okay? Where is she? She should just be in school right now. And it's like, no, your daughter graduated. She's smart like you, you idiot. She's doing her own thing. Where is she? Oh, she's at Supercore, because she wants to learn a little bit about the family business, so she sees that they got the chain, still chained up, so he's not going to escape from his thing. And then the holographic LL01 talks to her as the holographic version of her father. So she can learn some information based on that. Interesting. What's that going to look like? Who knows? We cut to the Daily Planet where Jimmy is hiding in a different room. He's like, Lois, when are you coming back? She's like, look, me and Clark, we're all, we need a couple days Okay, we'll be back soon, a vacation. Just, you're in charge, Jimmy. Just take it easy. She's like, guess Jimmy's in charge now. Surf's up. And he goes, what? Why? I'm in charge. <laughs> She's like, shit, did I just put Jimmy in charge? Yeah, you did. That's funny. I like that little interaction. It's at that moment that Clark wakes up from his healing coma or whatever. And is like, hey, how's it going? I guess Jimmy's in charge of the planet while you're gone, huh? Yeah, that's dumb. And that is when Mercy walks into the room. She's like, look, you're under super corp supervision, but of course we're going to let Lois in here. And she tries to play it off like, oh, I was just interviewing him. It's like, come on, Lois. I know all about this. I know the Clark secret identity shit. I know who you are. I know your guys' relationship. It's fine. I genuinely don't care. You are also still too poisoned to do anything, Superman. You still have a bunch of kryptonite running through your blood. So we're not going to have you deal with anything but that's not what superman does he has to go out there and deal with the stuff because farm and graft have their next target in sights and we know their next target is going to be Marilyn moonlight a character that appeared like in issue three or issue four early on like months ago it has been months since those characters since that character appeared and i feel like we haven't talked about her since but hey building it up five issues later six issues later i mean about time right or was she even in issue two? She was a very early conception for this book. Like a spirit protecting Metropolis in the moonlight. You know, like it's Dark Avenger or something. It's, it's a fun concept, but because Superman is still poisoned, the idea is he should wear one of the power suits that Lex built, but Superman's not going to wear the purple and green. He's got to update it a little bit. We then cut to Marilyn Moonlight, and she's on a rooftop, and then Graf shows up, and he's like, you can still work for us, you know. We can still take down Lex Luthor together. She's like, shut up. I don't want to work with you. I don't want to play with you. You're a loser. He's getting ready to attack her. She's got guns, ghost guns aimed at him, I should say. And then Superman comes in in like a power suit that's kind of assembles what Lex had, but it's more his own design. It looks really cool. 
and you can buy the McFarlane action figure probably early March next year. <laughs> and he's like, look, stop. Marilyn, you don't have to do this. She's like, I know. I wasn't going to help him. Look at this freak. I don't need your help. And that's when Graft takes his wheelchair and it goes like weird robotic doctor guy. So he has like a bubble form over his head and it turns into like a spider thing. It's really crazy. And then we just got a couple of uh, panels of just them fighting. And you know what? It looks good. We have a guest artist on this issue. It's uh, Redondo who worked on the early Nightwing stuff from the Tom Taylor run. So it looks really good. And, and his interpretation of Superman, that's a really fun thing to see. I can't be mad at that at all. It's, I'm having a blast with this book. So it's Superman teaming up with uh, like a ghost cowboy. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Okay. So... The idea is that Graft kind of doesn't care about Superman at the moment. He just wants to hurt Marilyn. So he shoots Marilyn Moonlight with, like, one of the powers of, like, his weird kryptonite claws. It causes her to explode. And then her and Superman vanish. And Graft's like, all right, on to phase two. On to phase two of the plan. We have no trace of Superman anywhere. He's lost in time. Cut to the past. And... Does it, does it say what year this is? I don't think it says what year it is. It's Old West times. So in the Old West, a locomotive is chugging along through the Metropolis Express. There is an old woman that's there of her boys. They are inventors and visionaries. And you'll notice the boys have blonde hair and black hair. And I, I do believe this is supposed to be farm and graft. Like, is that what we're saying? Because Marilyn Moonlight references like their mother was an interesting woman earlier. And we have two sons here that invoke a certain style to them. And they're visionaries for Metropolis. I'm, I'm thinking we're saying that these two kids are either related to farm and graft or they are farm and graft. But they, they're expecting trouble in the city of tomorrow because they're going to reinvent it. So they had a couple of, they hire a couple of people that are going to protect them and take care of them. And they're two vigilantes, I guess, outlaws under the names of Nighthawk and Cinnamon. And that's pretty sick. That looks really fun. <laughs> uh, is this a reference to something else? I I, I might, if I, um, if I look it up, like before I do the review or like after the review, I mean, I might be like, is this supposed to be like Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon? Was there like an adventure in the Taylor book where like these two went back to the Old West? Because they look exactly like Dick and Babs. And maybe that's something I don't know. I'll have to look it up. And then they look out the window and an outlaw is headed their way in a red cape. That's very strange. But he's chugging so fast, almost faster than a locomotive. And he jumps on top of this locomotive and then Nighthawk and Cinnamon have to go deal with him. All right, you stand back, sir. We don't want any trouble. They're holding guns ready to blast this guy, but this guy doesn't like guns, so he lasers them down with his laser eyes because he is robbing the train. It's Superman. He's an outlaw in the Old West, dressed like Superman. Freaking sick. Freaking sick! That's so cool! Superman in the Old West. What would he look like? A cool, badass guy. Of course, he's got a white hat because he's a good guy. Of course, he's wearing the cape. That's sick sick i'm having fun you set up the next mini arc pretty well it's like okay we're yellow kryptonite blast Marilyn moonlight and they head into the past or he does who knows where Marilyn is uh we set up that lena's doing something and jimmy's in charge of the daily planet for a minute so that's kind of fun what's that gonna look like it could be anything it could be nothing or it just could be a really fun time we will have to wait and see but i am enjoying it i am enjoying this quite a lot i think there's some really cool stuff at play here and i love a good cowboy story I love the else world where it's the Justice League as Cowboys, so this is fun. I think it's all fun. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Nighthawk and Cinnamon. Who are they? Badasses? I don't know. So, Superman issue number nine. I'm going to give an eight out of ten. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.